The Atari Creep YouTube channel is intended for a mature audience. Regardless of the subject matter, this video may contain strong language, simulated violence, and psychological nudity. Viewer discretion is advised. What's up, Creepers and Geekers Chris the Atari Creep? How is everyone doing today? Room tours. I can't do a room tour. It's been a while since I've shown off just like a... A stack of stuff. Um, I don't have a room anymore. I have this shelf. <laughs> this shelf and some storage in another room that we don't ever really use. Um, I rearranged it yesterday and said, you know what? I'm going to show it off. I'm going to show it off shelf by shelf. I even have a few things on the side here we'll probably start with. It's going to be a longer video. It's going to be a longer video. So I will, in the comments, timestamp and, and, and just, I don't know, I'll say Haunted Mansion shelf, Atari shelf main shelf you know and just go to whatever whatever tickles your fancy so just to give you an over overview we're going to be looking at haunted mansion atari with random that's the main shelf right there it's my monster shelf uh some star wars stuff some pseudo masters of the universe and random creepy toys so starting on the side here are my my Mego figures i kind of stopped collecting these because they're getting hotter and hotter to find out in the public. I really need to start embracing the online ordering thing. Uh, I don't do it too often. In fact, I think I did it for this one. Um, I know my buddy Coleco Joe helped me out with this one. He found it in his Target because I couldn't find one to save my life. And he bought it. I sent him the money. You, you know the deal. Um, but there are a handful of us. A bunch of Hammer Horror that I'd like to get my hands on. Just, this is such a great line. I'm actually thinking about opening these up and getting like little stands for them. I guess you would call them doll stands. <laughs> and, and making their own little display. But for right now, I'm gonna leave them like this. And if you remember correctly, maybe not, they were on the top of the shelf and they were just taking up way too much space. So I just put a couple brads in the side of this damn thing. So just to get a little up close and personal, I got videos on each one of these, I believe, except for one. I don't think I did the Glowing Dr. Dracula, which we'll get to, but this one's my favorite. My favorite of them all. Look at the sculpt on that face. Amazing stuff. Amazing. Um, this one was actually licensed by the Lugosi family. The, the crest or the logo's right there. Uh, so you know I absolutely had to have that one. Again, this was the first one I got, and it was through my buddy, Clico Joe, uh, with the hookup. Another variant of Frankenstein's monster. Same head sculpt. I'm um, just not, again, officially licensed through, um, I believe, uh, what do you call it there? The Universal Monster thing. This is such an odd and obscure fucking reference. I never thought in a million years I'd have a fucking... Uh, an action figure from the face of the screaming werewolf. Have you ever seen that movie? Oh my god. But you know what? Out of all of these, and I found this in Target, this one I think feels more like the originals in, in aesthetic anyway. Um, I don't know how to say it. They all represent that timeline of action figures or dolls, whatever you want to call them. But for some reason, this one just kind of captures that feeling. Maybe because of its odd re obscurity, uh, reference-wise, you know? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, fun figure. I'm glad to have it. Then we have a glow-in-a-dark Frankenstein's monster. Fuck yeah. Chains and everything. So, I mean, you can kind of see the glimpses of, of where they're going with this, you know? This one, he's just green and has an outfit. I love this outfit. I know it's not accurate, but... I like it. I like it. A lot of people take this guy, remove that outfit, and put this outfit on him. But I don't know. Uh, but here's the chains from from the naked one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, reusing parts. It's great. And when I saw this came out, it reminded me of Castlevania, so I had to grab him. As a matter of fact, I found him at a... Uh, um, I know that's a, a GameStop tag, but it was... At the time, the store was one of those Think Geeks. It was like six bucks. Six bucks. I was happy to have found that. So there you go. That's the side of my shelf. All right. Coming to the top. This is my 
haunted mansion shelf. I, you know, I've started collecting more haunted mansion stuff as of late. Maybe it's because of this addiction I have to a Facebook group that I belong to. Um, but, you know, longtime viewers of my channel will know that I am a huge fan of the haunted mansion. I knew the ride inside and out before I had even experienced it. Before I had even experienced it. Growing up, the haunted mansion was just, it was, it was a bucket list. It was a goal. And I've been there. I've done that, and I still need more. I still need more. This is one of the greatest fucking attractions to ever have come out. Uh, we won't talk about too much here. We've already made videos, but uh, there's a Haunted Mansion comic book. There's a special... Uh, Walt Disney World Magazine is a monthly publication that my girlfriend gets. This was a special order that she did for me. Uh, it wasn't too expensive or anything, but you had to, you had to request it to get it and pay for it, of course, so... Um, and there's my Haunted Mansion Golden Book. We might be doing something with that that's family friendly later on this month. Uh, keep an eye out for that. And this is my, my crushed pennies for my first trip to the Haunted Mansion. These were the only four that they had that was Haunted Mansion themed. Uh, so I, I displayed it like this. A Dollar Tree frame. Printed background on my printer. And just double sided tape. I might have glued them. I can't remember now. But some people are pretty impressed by that. They, they like the creativity, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but either way, I'm happy to have displayed it that way. I do have more Haunted Mansion stuff than just this. But this is all I really felt uh, I really wanted to put on the shelf. This is a 3D model of the one in Florida. My Haunted Mansion. Uh, it's one of my first 3D prints. It's a little guy. But I like it. It captured the detail. I cut the fence off. The fence just looked weird. So it's literally just the structure of the house. All right, moving over here, we have, that's an ornament my girlfriend bought me. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but one of the, uh, what, do you, what would you call those things? Gargoyle things on the left. It doesn't have a head when we got it and the head wasn't in the box. So they had to have known it was broken, but they ended up refunding her because they didn't have a new one and we got to keep it. So I might make a mold of the head and just glue it on there. It'll be good enough for government work. There's my um, my 50th anniversary doom buggy. Now, mind you, that's the 50th anniversary for the Anaheim Haunted Mansion, the original. Uh, just recently got that. That's the Skyliner as it is at Walt Disney World. And that's the Haunted Mansion variant. Never got to ride it, but I saw it plenty of times, which I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, blind box thing, it's the organist from the ballroom. The sign. My Funko Pop of the original Haunted Mansion, which I would like to visit someday. Um, it's a salt and pepper shaker. If you notice, it looks like it, it fell off the shelf at one point and broke. Sorry about the shaky cam. Um, so I just glued it together and left it as is. It's not like I'm ever going to use it. There's uh, the Hitchhiking Ghosts in their Doom Buggy. That is a fast food uh, prize. When it lights up, you can see like a, a creepy thing in the mirror. I just haven't been able to get in there to change the battery safely, you know. Um, I don't want to break it or anything. But my buddy Rick R. sent that over to me. There's the other... Uh, I don't know which one was salt, which one was pepper. But you get the idea. That's a sign I printed up in, on my printer. That's a recent acquisition. Absolutely love these guys. Somebody... Put a wash on theirs and it looks so much better. I don't know if I if I have the heart to do that though. Uh, we'll see. Eventually I might. And there's my hat box ghost ornament that we got a couple of years ago. Love, love, love the face. Absolutely love it. All right. So here's the one shelf that hasn't really changed too much. Um. I've just added more games to it. I have like three or four different places I have my Atari cartridges. And this one space I really just wanted to clear for something else. So I just put them all here. There's honestly no rhyme or reason to why anything. I mean, I do have like all the Activision stuff together. And if you were to be able to see it behind here, all the Magic cards stacked. Um, as well as the, I believe, my... Um, <clears throat> Pocket Brother cartridges are stacked behind here. I mean, you see my, my maroon labels and all my Coleco ones are stacked behind 
these ones, I just, again, didn't have room. Uh, this is a mystery. Uh, we know what's on here because I did a video. I don't remember what it was, and I never made a label for it. So maybe it'll just be another mystery for me. Uh, and the other reason the Magic carts, uh, I'm sorry, the M Network carts are in the in that case is because they don't stack well. That's it. Not for any other reason but that. A couple of repros. I know people love repros. <laughs> But I'm never going to afford either one of these. Maybe I'll bump into them by accident at some point in my life. But, um, yeah, I had my buddy make those up. This is just a manual for the synth cart I printed. Um, Willie Arcade USA hooked me up with a synth cart a while back. And I'm still researching making a keyboard to work with it. Um, I do have the right controls to, to play with it, but I'd rather have it done on a keyboard. I saw some guy do it a while back. And it turned out really well. If I can remember, I'll put the video down below. I doubt I will, but nah, we'll see. But either way, either way, um, yeah, it, it's just, it looks like something fun. Something really fun I'd like to really get into, but we'll see. Down the line, down the line. I have another synth project I'm going to start here pretty soon. Uh, again, from Willie, ironically enough. So I printed this uh, Snoke Throne for something else. I can't remember what. But um, it was the wrong scale, but it just so happened to work with my Bernie Sanders and mittens. <laughs> Remember when that was popular, putting him in all kinds of different situations? He was originally on a folding chair, but the chair never printed properly. Uh, and he just happened to fit this, so I just put him on there. And next to him is my Trump pug, my puggy, puggy Trump. Now you can read into this however you like, positive or negative. I'm not going to get into that debate. I'm not going to tell you my thoughts on the guy. Um, but just know this, that this caused a lot of problem in a 3D printing Facebook group. I posted the picture saying, hey, look what I printed. And then it was deleted. So I posted it again and it got deleted. So I got frustrated by that because I hate censorship. So I just posted it and posted it and posted it and kept posting until they messaged me. And I posted with... Um, don't repress me or something like that. And the guy's like, you're going to get kicked out of the group. I'm like, that's the point, but I just need to aggravate you first. And uh, he finally did kick me out of the group. He's like, if I see you on any of the 28, no lie, this is what he said to me, 28 other Facebook groups I admin, <laughs> I'm kicking you out of all of them. I'm like, whatever, dude. Okay. Um, it's my ET. I actually might clean this up. And do a mold of it and make like little uh, ornaments or trinkets of Mr. E.T. Because when I think of the game, I think of Christmas. Uh, the commercial opening up Christmas morning, 82. Good memories, good memories, despite everyone's fucking stupidity about it. Um, there's my Moon Patrol. I have another copy of Moon Patrol in here somewhere. A better looking cart. So I use this one to display... This model kit by RK that I put together. This model kit went from Willie. Well, first it started up with RK. Then it went to Willie of Arcade USA, who then sent it over the Phil the No Swear Gamer, who sent it to me, and I put it together. There's a video about this if you haven't seen it. So go ahead and uh, check that out. Good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, yeah. And these are my original... Um, Mini Monsters from Remco. They're the, the only two I have. And those those capes are... Uh, they're repro. I made them. I made them. I'm not trying to pass them off as anything. I got yelled at by some fucking idiot purists. Oh, just buy them. <laughs> Whatever. I just made them. Fuck you. Get over it. The retail market. <laughs> Shut up. Um, I got this at CVS for like no money. I had coupons and it was like 20 cents by the time I was done. Uh, the greatest pencil sharpener in the world. People were sending me about a week or two ago. Tons of people sent me pictures of this thing. They were like, hey, hey, Chris or Creep, you know, whatever the case may be in that circumstance. And I kept sending a picture of him saying, yeah, I got it. I made a video about it, too. Um, I use him as a werewolf. Uh, Wolfman figure. Get over it. Uh, one random Rough Rider. I love Stompers. I wish I had uh, collected them before they got super hot. 
It's my portable. What happened was I didn't have anything up here and I wanted something more Atari. So I put the portable up there and then I just started putting these <laughs> random things up here because I had no room anywhere else for them. So uh, my poor Atari portable is, uh, is hiding in the back. This is a video I had made too. It's a, it's a table, a lab table for one of my Frankenstein's monster action figures. Um, I don't know where the figure is. <laughs> I don't know where the figure is. Um, but I made that. There's a video on that too. If you want to see it, my million macabre. But it's literally made out of junk. Um, hangers. A couple plastic hangers and sprue stuff. There you go. From a model kit. So there you go. There's the Atari shelf. So this shelf here is what sparked the entire project anyway, I say, of rearranging my shelves. Not that I don't do it often, um, but I really wanted to get this house and my, my Toonie Terrors on the shelf so I could see it better. It was on an end table in the corner of the room, and it was hard to get to, and some of the figures would fall down. It was actually a pain in the ass, but I wanted it front and center, and I had to move this shelf a few times to get this fucking house to fit but i finally made it happen so this is my horror shelf and we'll just leave it at that for now so there's mr freddy krueger again we did a video on that wow he's so washed out you can barely see the color in his face it looks stupid in this in this light um but he's an 18 inch model kit from back in the day that my friend btb sent my way i guess it was one of his childhood ones and He's like, hey, can you restore it? And I did. We have a video. The only thing we haven't done is I haven't given them blades yet. I do have one of the Mylar blades down in here somewhere. Um, can barely see it. But I'm going to use it as a template. Now, there was somebody on one of the modeling groups I follow who was doing one of these from, you know, see, I restored it and he's just doing it from out of the box. And he did not use the Mylar blade. So I you know, requested, hey, can I send you a few bucks for them? And he was supposed to just send them out to me, but he never he never did. And that made me sad. So I'm going to have to come up with something. But either way, right now, it won't fit in the shelf anyway. So um, there's my creepy tree I got last year in a trade along with that dude and that dude. But I made a trade with somebody. I don't even remember what I sent them. Um, probably something Mo2. I don't know. But apparently that was that Dollar General one Halloween or whatever for a few bucks. One of the greatest things I own. I love it. Absolutely love it. it. Just You can't really see it here on camera. The realistic flicker of that flame. And it's diffused just perfectly with whatever this plastic thing is. So works out really well and it looks awesome in the dock. And that's one of my guys. That's Cyclops. They're all by Etsy shop. Link down below. I got tons of them different colors and finishes and all kinds of stuff go get them go get one so now we're going to get into some of my toonie terrors which is uh you know again you got a scooby-doo mansion the toonie terrors are supposed to be scooby-doo villain like so i've had them displayed around this thing since i started collecting them uh, but again i couldn't get to them when they fell down and stuff so here they are up front and center um sam back there pretty cool stuff took me forever to get him the creep in the middle there to stand straight they fucked up with that figure but i finally got it to work finally got it to work um that's from wendy's this monster here and that monster here i believe i hit in the back the green guy i believe i have a video of him i got another one way over here but we'll get to that there's two more i don't have and someone local does have some for sale but they got a whole ton of them and i really just want two with a bunch and i don't think they're gonna I don't think they're going to let me buy them individually, but I have an ace up my sleeve. They're related to a kid I graduated high school with that I'm still very friendly with. So There's a uh, Frankenstein's Monster Lego guy. I uh, I don't want to call him a minifigure because he's like five inches tall, but <laughs> something like that, four or five inches tall. This was actually a Frankenstein mug that I kind of smashed onto in Tinkercad onto an actual Lego head. And then I took the outfit and put it on the face of it, um, of the suit. So I did do some custom work to make this thing happen. I don't know if I still have the files, but if anyone wants them, I'll send them along. There's a few flaws in the head, but overall it looks all right. Now, he's got a scowl 
This right here is his bottom lip. It looks like a mustache without paint. Um, he actually kind of looks like Roosevelt. <laughs> I think. He was going to give him the glasses. But, um, yeah, it's fun. I wanted to make a giant one, but I don't know, we'll see. Maybe down the line somewhere. These are awesome. My buddy Otto Necro sent me out a package years ago. And these four. Right, I know I only have three figures up. Okay, here. These four. The, the four monsters. We're in the package. I'd never heard of this line. Uh, Mad Wheels. So, of course, I went online and started picking a few more up. I'd like to get more, but... Um, yeah, I just thought they were so cool. They're just basically like little cars. The little, little, little micro machine cars, but instead of actual vehicles, they're just goofy fucking shapes and stuff like that. And they got fun names and, you know, whatever. Um, there's Mr. Voorhees. We painted one of these to look like um, the NES one. We gave it away last year for the Alzheimer's Association. Pretty fun times. Pretty fun times. And we have Leatherface. And the pumpkin, I got to turn that, that came with Michael Myers when the Tuna Terrors first came out. Um, he was on the top shelf. I didn't even know he was there. I think one of the girls might have put him there. A Frankenstein's monster ducky. So I just put, I put him front and center. Uh, a couple of the um, monster in my pockets. There's another Nosferatu. God, that's such a great figure. Great figure. All right, one of the first Toonie Terrors I got, besides Jason, of course. Pretty cool stuff. I love that line. I, I, need, to, I need to jump back on collecting. Um, there's a whole bunch more I haven't gotten, so we'll figure it out. But they do. They That's one of the original Scooby-Doo villains, as with that. And they just they fit in perfectly. They did a really good job with it. Um, this is my Christine. I don't have a battery in it right now. The headlights and taillights light up, and the interior dash lights up green. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. My buddy uh, Mike of Irmo Custom Models put that together. I'm setting it out my way. As well as the six scale Frankenstein monster. He always has that stupid Santa hat on. Um, it went on as a joke one year for Christmas time, and it just never left. <laughs> it never left. So. Uh, I found this at a thrift store last week. It's one of the original uh, blinky lights for, uh, well, it doesn't blink. It's just a regular light. But you remember, you can get it for like a buck or whatever at every CVS or Walgreens or whatever uh, during the Halloween season. But that's one of the originals. So I was pretty happy to have found that for like, what, a buck fifty or something like that at a thrift store. Um, I don't know. Old Halloween stuff just have a different vibe. And I'm not talking about nostalgia. I'm just talking about its creep factor, you know. Things are, things have gotten cute over the years, and I suppose that has its place. But yeah, um, there's one of the ghost shells from the Supernaturals. That's all I have from that line. Fantastic line, impossible to. Uh, well, it's, it's it's overpriced if you ask me. So I don't have the money to be collecting shit like that. But somehow I ended up with one of these. You know, I think I got him with. Um, I bought a, uh, it's on, it's on the bottom shelf too, a, um, Swamp Thing action figure, I think, I think that came in the package too, but it's cool, I dig it, I dig it as is, um, more monster in my pocket, and the other Wendy's, uh, mix-up, mash-up, uh, monsters, like I said, we need a video, tops and the bottoms popped off, you know, and you can swap the head from this guy and put it on the legs of this guy, you, know, you get the idea. And this is a custom Jason Voorhees figure I made a long time ago. Still don't have a fucking hand for him. Um, he was made from a G.I. Joe, not a vintage. And this was an ice cube mold that I just used for uh, making little masks. I, cowboy hat, I don't know where that came from. I'm going to assume it came from one of the girls' dolls. And I just said, fuck it, and put it on him. <laughs> it just never left. Uh, but, <clears throat> yeah. So that's the horror shelf. Again, if there's anything in particular here, I say again, I don't know if I said it before, that you want me to focus on a little bit more, uh, put it down in the comments. I have no problem making videos about shit I've already talked about. All right, next is my, I, I, mean, I guess I'm gonna call it the Star Wars shelf. I mean, it is the Star Wars shelf, but it doesn't really have a lot of my actual Star Wars stuff. As a matter of fact, 
Oh, I keep screaming up there. On the other side of this wall is my dresser. That's how small this place is. My dresser's in the fucking hallway. Um, and it has a lot of my Star Wars stuff. As well as, I have a whole bunch of box uh, Power of the Force stuff that I got from my buddy Storm Surge a long time ago that we still need to unbox and look at. We've only really looked at the TIE Fighter. But, eh, it is what it is. So, there we go. My Star Wars shelf. So, starting over here, these are... I got these for stocking stuffers from Mr. Santa Claus. Um, that's one of the Action Force Fleet or whatever it's called. I really do like that line. I like it a lot. Um, and I want to continue collecting at least the figures. I don't care so much for the vehicles, but the figures are great. Um, I think we did a video on these ones. It's the Mandalorian set. This one didn't come with any vehicles. It was literally just these five figures. And, of course, the prim for the child, which is a nightmare to get him to stand in. You would think they would have figured that one out, right? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, oh, and that is my Darth Vader uh, Legacy Saber from Galaxy's Edge. One of my favorite items of all time. It was a dream come true. I know it's not one of the super fancy ones you can buy from, you know, custom, sa custom saber makers and all kinds of stuff. I don't care. It's real enough for me. Um, again, a dream. A dream come true. That was a bucket list item. And uh, we'll be talking about that on the channel probably pretty soon. I don't know. Maybe around Christmas time. Maybe around Christmas time we'll have a look at that. We'll also have a look at this saver. This is um, Savi's workshop. You put it together and all that stuff. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with it by now. I went elemental nature and I have a green kyber crystal in there. Um, where is my red one? Oh, it's over. It's over on the other side. But I did buy a red one for that one because I hadn't bought this yet. And I wasn't sure. I, I wanted to at least have one red blade. And what's great about these things is the blade that goes in here is the same blade that goes in there. So I didn't have to buy a separate blade. And I, I'm quite perfectly fine with that. It doesn't bother me at all. So, so over here, we just have a couple of random things. It's a 3D printed lightsaber. Uh, Grogu obviously doesn't have a lightsaber. Uh, but people uh, took some elements. They put the mud horn on it. They also took that little ball from the razor crest that uh, the child likes to play with. And they, they made it like a little baby lightsaber for him. So I 3D printed up one. I made a custom base for it. I put that together and printed it. Um, and that's the, that's the kyber crystal. Funny story. There's two kinds of kyber crystals you can get. A silver cap or a gold cap. The gold cap are primarily for the holocrons. I mean, it does work in the lightsaber, um, but I should have got the silver cap because there would have been a chance of a black crystal. But, uh, there's my Black Series Mandalorian and the child. That's my Black Series child. This is a Camtono that I printed, the uh, little money safe that the Mandalorian got his Baskar in. There's one of the Jawas. I love these Jawa figures. I think Coleco Joe. I think those are from Coleco Joe. Amazing figures. I love them. Love them, love them, love them. There's uh, my Black Series Jar Jar. Yeah, I spent money on that. Um, I don't like the character. I do like the design of them. And I think it's become one of those things that I hate it so much, I really just want to start collecting Jar Jar Bing stuff. So if you're any Jar Jar Bing stuff that you just want to throw my way, go ahead. I'll make a fucking shrine. I don't care. Um... It's just lately I've been on a Jar Jar Binks kind of kick. Uh, I might buy this bank. It's like a bust of him. It's an 8-inch bank. <laughs> That's Jar Jar and he's staring right in your fucking soul. But uh, We didn't build this live. Did we build this live? I think I did. I think I did build that live. I don't remember. But That's my Razor Crest model. Uh, I made a custom base for it. I haven't painted it. but uh, Well, I did. I painted it black. It was printed in red. But I haven't done any of the detail work. Uh, it's got the mud horn on there, and it's got a cradle perfectly for the perch that the model came with. I still have to put the decals on it and weather it, but um, I was happy with that. I can't wait for bigger ones to come out. Uh, Razor Crest is one of my favorite ships right now, so, and, and maybe it is because it's new. I don't know, but either way, um, I'd like to print up one that'll work with these guys. As a matter of fact, there are a bunch of files for the three and three quarter scale figures. 
but it, it comes to find out it actually works better with the uh, the Mission Fleet figure. So we may do that here in the future uh, as a long-term project. There's one of my first 3D printed projects I ever did. I purchased this on Etsy for like 20 bucks. I put it together and painted it. Um, I'm not entirely happy with the paint job on it, but I keep it around anyway. I keep it around like this anyway. If, if you can't tell, it's Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber. Actually, I want to display it that way. That looks better. Obi-Wan Kenobi. So yeah, there is my humble Star Wars shelf. So here's my Masses of the Universe shelf. This is next to last. If, if you're not clicking forward, you're just watching straight through. Now, I got a small confession to make. I have sold off most of my original uh, Masters of the Universe collection. When I say original, I don't mean ones I had as a kid. I mean, I did a whole video about being jealous I couldn't get them as a kid because I had too many other action figure lines. My parents were like, no, no more. Um, what I mean by original vintage, original vintage. Um, I kept a couple, obviously. You can see Skeletor there, Battle Armor, and He-Man. And Battle Cat, of course, this was a, a buddy of mine. He grew up with it. And he's like, yeah, let's get it in your hands so you can um, display it with a He-Man again. We need to have that happen. He also gave me the Havoc Staff, that uh, Battle battle Scar Skeletor battle damage is uh, carrying. But you'll notice something here that there's a little, little not so much Motu going on, <clears throat> but more of the vibe. I really like the whole beast and man thing that they do here so you know riffing off of he-man on battle cat remember i made this uh he-man delorean figure it's not finished yet i still want to get the the um leg pads to put on there uh, but i don't know if i'm going to go any further with it i think i like the simplicity of it but uh buddy of mine sent me this uh do back it just happened to fit perfectly so I said, fuck it, that's perfect for my Mandalorian. My He-Mandalorian, you know? So I did that, and I've been happy with it ever since. This is part of the Fun Colan Savage World, the Michael Myers. It's a little project I'm working on. I decided to do one without any washes. Uh, these are on my Etsy shop, but, you know, not, not clean like that. Uh, go to my Etsy shop. There's a whole bunch of really cool stuff there. There's a bunch of stuff coming seriously look around see if there's something that might tickle your fancy it'll help me out a great deal you know i don't do the patreon stuff and i don't beg you to buy t-shirts and crap but um if you could honestly go to my my etsy shop and see if there's something that you know you might like you know put it in your cart and i'll get notification maybe i'll give you a discount code we'll see um so more more of that fun co savage world so here's freddie and jason on their beasts these are from the uh, DC Savage World, but I bought him anyway. I love that lizard guy. Now, I don't know how he corresponds with, with Freddy, but the idea here was Jason's a man of the woods. Of course he'd be riding a fucking giant wolf, right? He doesn't sit on that too well, but I've been uh, having some luck with him on here, so pray for me. <laughs> There's um, Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain. They had, like, blind figures blind bag figures inside of them. I just wanted the skull and the, the snake here. I just wanted the mountain and the castle. I didn't want the stupid little stealth figures. I hate those. I hate it when they take a figure and they squish it down, but they don't do it proportionately. I like minifigures like this, but when they make them fucking so goofy looking, I can't, I know a lot of people dig that, but I can't, I can't get down. So here's a lot of my Mega Constructs stuff. Uh, I have World's Smallest back there. Those actually should be up front here, and I'll fix that after the camera's gone. But I also have, these came from the Dollar Tree. We did a video on them. People still send me, hey, have you seen these at the Dollar Tree? Yeah, I got, I got all five of them. I got them. Thank you. Appreciate that. And, um, yeah, it's really, I don't, I don't want to collect any more of these. That was dumb. I already have this figure. Why? Well, spend a whole $10 so I can have this stupid thing that looks like a fucking bowl? Let's smoke some weed out of, out of Skeletor's skull. <laughs> Actually, that sounds like a rad night. <laughs> Smoking weed out of Skeletor's skull. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that's a waste of money. It's a waste of money. And, of course, you know, we have Battle Armor Skeletor with an original Havoc staff. 
and that's part of the new Revelations line, which I think is absolutely amazing. And that's the only figure I have from that line. I'm going to start hopefully getting more soon. And this, this will slowly become more populated with that. And these will get their own shelf. I really, I'm really loving this, this idea. I'd like to get one for each one of these guys and theme them. But I think I kind of timed myself out on buying these. They were been on clearance for a while, but as a matter of fact, I got these for $6.99 each on clearance. So last shelf, and you know what? I don't know about you guys, but I hate bottom shelves. I absolutely hate them. Let me get up. Move my kneeling pad. Um, I don't know. I just feel like the bottom shelf always gets the shit nobody really cares to see. Um, I forgot I had that matchbox. That matchbox haunted house. So I put that down there. That is a Wayne Manor Castle. Um, we did a video on that. It used to be on the top shelf. And I had the, the um, Remco figures in there. But I decided to put... I got the Burger King ones. There's, uh, you know, Dracula. There's Frankenstein's monster on his table. Um, creature. And the Wolfman's in there. That keeps falling, so I'm just going to leave it like that. I did a video on those. Uh, Burger King gave these away with uh, their kids' meals back in 97. Amazing stuff. There's uh, that dude from DC, Grumbles, or whatever the fuck his name is. I'm eventually going to give him a green tint. He looks like a Frankenstein's monster to me. That's what he's gonna be, and there, there, there you go. There's the um, that's the <laughs> he fell over too. Um, the swamp creature there, swamp thing. <laughs> wow, I can't talk today. That I got along with the supernaturals here, but yeah, there you go. There's not really much to say about this. Uh, the Wayne Manor. I saw someone display their original Remco movie monsters with that, with some flashing lights and stuff. Thought it looked great. So I asked him what that was, and he told me. And I found this for like three dollars on the Facebook Marketplace. I just had to drive an hour and a half for it. So the family made an adventure of it. It was a fun day, and I got that for three bucks. It's not complete by any stretch of the imagination. I did a video on it, um, but it really fits the part. It really does fit the part. So I'm happy to have that. So that, after a long, exhausting, <laughs> hopefully you got through the whole thing. And if you didn't, that's cool. I'm okay with that. Um, at least I hope you got to see something that you're interested in. Anyway, but that's my shelf. That's my shelf for right now, and you never know. I may change it tomorrow. I may never change it ever again. And anything in between. Again, if there's something that you uh, that tickles your fancy, you want me to talk a little bit more about, let me know, that, know down in the comments what shelf is your favorite. What was your favorite item? What do you think I'm missing besides more of the Toonie Terrors? I know I definitely need more of those guys. Um, but let me know what you would have added to some of this stuff. And uh, maybe do a response video. Do you have like one shelf where you display some of your favorite things to look at? Let me see. I would love to see it. So make a video. Let me know it exists. I'll go look at it and I will act accordingly guys thank you always so much for watching i really do appreciate it i hope you're doing well and um yeah that's it until next time take care creep it real i've just been talking for way too long and bye bye